This is Twit. I got a kick out of the blog post headline posted at the Voln, V-U-L-N, Voln Check website. It read, there are too many damned honeypots, exclamation point. So here's what the Voln Check guys explained. They wrote, determining the number of Internet-facing hosts Affected by a new vulnerability is a key factor in determining if it will become a widespread or emergent threat. If there are are a lot of hosts affected, there's a pretty good possibility things are about to pop off, as they put it. But if only a few hosts are available for exploitation, that's much less likely. But actually counting those hosts turns out has become quite a bit more challenging. They said, for example, take CVE 2023-22527. So that's last year. Um, This affected the Atlassian Confluence servers. They said, at the time of writing, Confluence has appeared on CIS's KEV, you know, K-E-V, the commonly exploited vulnerabilities list, nine Yes, nine times. They, they, they wrote, that's a level of exploitation that should encourage everyone to get their Confluence servers off the Internet. But let's look for ourselves. There are a number of generic Confluence Shodan queries floating around. But x-confluence-request-time, so x-confluence-request-time, might be the most well-known. This simply checks for an HTTP response header being, uh, you know, being returned. In other words, okay, so breaking from them for a second, the, as we know, the Shodan Internet Search Scanner um, is constantly scanning the net uh, and aggregating the presence of of hosts on the internet. Oh. Uh, Who's listening to what port on what IP? And in the same way that Google indexes the Internet so that it's easy to find a site by by search terms, Shodan indexes the Internet so that you're able to find vulnerable or, or at least present services by IP and type of service. So it's a, you know, it's a search engine for stuff that's listening on ports. So the, the Shodan can make an HTTP query to Confluence's service port. And if the reply coming back from that port contains the reply header X Confluence request time, that strongly suggests that there's a running Confluence server answering queries at that IP and port. So the Volncheck guys then show a Shodan screen capture showing, get this, 241,702, 241702 occurrences of that reply header being returned from queries across the Internet. Then they point out one particular thing. They say 241,000, you know, it's a little more than that, hosts, they said, is a great target base for an emergent threat. But on closer examination, there's something off about the listed hosts. For example, this one, and they select one, has the Confluence X Confluence request time header But it also has an F5 fave icon, you know, as in the well-known security firm F5 Systems. Uh Uh And they say it also claims to be a QNAP TS-128A, you know, uh, NAS device. They say this is a honeypot. Yeah. You know, because it's it's arranging to look like a bunch of things in order to attract flies. I got to tell you, this is something that our sponsor 
would never have done. They have so much so accurate, and they don't put their little logo in it, and they don't impersonate more than one device. So this is not right. a canary, obviously. This is some other. Right. Well, and I was thinking about this, too. Canaries are not meant to be publicly exposed. That's they're right. All, that's they're right. there for your lamb I mean, I, in order to, to detect intrusion. That's what you want. You don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There was no reason you would stick it out there, right. you know, just to, to take incoming yeah. from the we Internet. Know, we know there's bad guys out there. We don't have to yes. test for yes. that. Yeah, what we want is to find out if any of them get inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the 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 Volnchek guys say whoever created this honey wat, th this honey pot was somewhat clever. They mashed together the popular Shodan queries for Confluence F5 devices and QNAP systems to create what they described as an abomination that would show <laughs> <laughs> that would show up in all three queries to avoid throwing exploits all over the internet and thus getting quickly caught some attackers use Shodan or similar to curate their target lists. This honeypot is optimized for this use oh, case, interesting. which is neat, but it blocks our view of what is real. Right. Can we filter them out of our search? They say at this point, it's probably useful to look at what a real Confluence server HTTP response look like. The server has a number of you of other useful headers to key off of, but we'll try to filter by adding in set cookie colon J session ID equals that update brings the host count down. Okay. So now they're saying, so th they modify their showdown query so that they want it to have both that, that very popular X confluence request time header and to be setting a cookie named J session ID equals. So, so they're, they're, they're doing an and on those two requirements. And they write that update brings the host count down from, from 241,702 to just 37,000. 964, so just shy of 38. Um, and they call that probably actual confluence servers publicly exposed to the internet. But is that number real? They say it still seems high because most of those do not respond with an actual confluence landing page. A simple way to capitalize on that is to also search for a snippet from the Confluence login page in our search criteria. So they add a, a another term to the Shodan query, looking for the for the returned HTML to contain the phrase Confluence base URL. And they say, ah, now we're down to twenty thousand five hundred and eighty four a little over half as many as before they added that additional term. And they write, this knocks off 17,000 hosts and th things are looking more confluency. But there seems to be a whole bunch of entries without fave icons. Let's drill down into that one and see. So they do that looking for the presence or lack of any fave icon for the site. And at one point, it occurs to them to examine the value being returned in the Confluence J session ID cookie settings reply header. And what do you know? A great many of those across the Internet have identical values, meaning they're not being generated dynamically. They're part of some fixed confluence simulating honeypot. And, this, and the simulation took some shortcuts. That is, the, the simulation of the honeypot took some shortcuts, for example, randomizing the J session ID, which gives it away when it's examined closely enough. By applying this spoofed J session ID filter, the number now drops to 4,000. 187 probably authentic 
publicly exposed Confluence servers. So again, they write and conclude. They said, a quick investigation suggests that this could be the complete set of real Confluence hosts or just very, very good honeypots. They say that's a reduction from around 240,000 hosts all the way down to just 4,200. That means there are approximately 236,000 Confluence honeypots on the Internet. That's or more than 50 times <laughs> the actual number <laughs> of Confluence users of real Confluence <laughs> servers. I'm thinking that's in well, it's interesting. You know, why do people want to do public honeypots? I don't get right, that. Right, just, you know, just probably to see. Just to see. Anyway, they they say a vulnerability that only impacts 4,000 hosts is much less concerning than a vulnerability that impacts 240,000 hosts. Understanding the scale of an issue and therefore being precise about the number of potentially impacted hosts is important too. Those who copy overinflated statistics or haven't done their due diligence are making vulnerabilities appear more impactful than they truly are. Uh, Three million toothbrushes, anyone? Anyway, while we focused on Confluence, they said, this particular problem has been repeated across many different targets. Honeypots are a net good for the security community, but their expanding popularity does make understanding real-world attack surfaces much more difficult for defenders, not just attackers. And, and Leo, you, I, I really think you raise a good point. You know, we're talking a quarter of a million. That's a lot of them. Bogus right. confluence servers. What? You uh, know, no. you're right. That's I don't know that, that there are that many bad Russians. It's just not as much fun to be a hacker so, as it used to be. I just. I, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this will be a very good rule of thumb for us to keep in mind moving forward. Academically, it's interesting that the explosion in honeypot use and population is this large. I mean, it's like, what? Who are all these people? You know, that's sort of astonishing. But this means that the tendency to immediately rely upon and believe the results of a simple, you know, not very critical so showdown search for a given open port assumes that you know, assuming that that means there's a truly vulnerable service running there needs to be significantly tempered. Yeah. And it also suggests that future Internet vulnerability scanners will themselves need to do a better job of filtering out the honeypots. Well, since the problem has obviously become, you know, nothing less than massive. And it might be worse even than that, because these were not well configured honeypots. I mean, any hacker worth his salt would have immediately noticed the Fortinet or whether or the F5 icon and and, and the fact that it was both a QNAP uh, and yeah. uh, I mean that's a little bit you know the whole thing doesn't ring true and I would think most bad guys except for script kiddies would be sensitive to that and watching out for that right. uh, there are probably many 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 more that they can't see because they're well configured they look just like a real Confluence server Yep. Yep. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below.